Welcome to Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, he is now the about to be in four weeks, the new head coach at Bond University. He is known for coaching uh, Kaylee McEwen to three gold medals, one bronze, the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. Today, we have the pleasure of sitting down with Chris Mooney. Hi, Coleman. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to get your take on how this summer went and and your coaching future moving forward. Uh, so let's start with with Australian trials. We talked to you um, a bit before just about your training methods and how you do 17 days on, four days off. That was an awesome podcast. It was great to get you guys' perspective on a, a really different training method. So heading into trials, how do you feel like things were going with training and particularly with, uh, with Kaylee's training and how she looked in the water? Yeah. So we, um, so our, our 21 day macro cycle, um, we sort of, um, work back backwards. So we, we actually reverse periodized to a certain date and then five weeks leading into trials, we just go back to the normal meso cycle of five one week training blocks or training meso cycles. Um, And main reason we do that is because that then reflects the amount of time that we move from our selection meet to our benchmark event, which is usually world championships or pair packs or this particular event being the Olympics. (laughs) Um, So yeah, we call that race ready. I think we may have mentioned that last time in the podcast. Um, so we, we, we've got five one weeks of becoming race ready, performance ready. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just probably that, that last phase of um, power type training. So some you know, broken efforts. Um, and we really try and prescribe the sets that, um, that we've done throughout the season, not necessarily test sets, but just training sets. And we really squeeze the, the short rest into it. Um, and we possibly make that very last session of, uh, of workout that we do before we go into taper, the hardest one that we've done all preparation. And uh, yeah, she tested really well and the, and the whole team tested really, really well in, in, that, in that period. And um, it just gives you a lot of confidence, both coach and athlete, um, that we're performing well, we're testing well, and then we drop into taper, which everyone loves, right? So um, yeah, quietly confident that our skills were on point, quietly com- comfortable and confident that um, you know, we tested well. And we had some great weather in Australia at that, that particular time. It's out your summer, our winter. Uh, we train outdoors. We've got an amazing facility, but uh, sometimes it does feel a little bit fresh. But uh, we were blessed with some great weather, this, this uh, preparation. And, uh, yeah, it really did create a, a perfect storm for us, to be honest. That sounds great. I, I have to ask, what, was there a particular test set that stood out to you, uh, especially for, especially for Kaylee? I mean, what, what kind of times was she throwing down that, that had you so pleased? Uh, well, we, we do the, the 12, short rest on two thirty. Um, that's probably at the, the pinnacle of, and, and the penultimate set that we do. That's probably our last set that we actually do before we go into our taper. Um, but yeah, you know, averaging 58 lows, short course meters for 12, 100s was, um, it's pretty exciting. We don't do big sets like that. As you know, as I said, normally we, we sort of progress to the, the hardest set that we can we can prescribe. And and in my book and, and in her book, that's uh, that's one that really challenges us both because it's you know, it's it's really reliant on skill. We've got all the biomech people in there. We're filming, um, so yeah, we, we, we're working really hard on on just yeah putting together um, skillful and, and, and best efforts. So that was probably the standout one for me in the lead up to to our trials. Mm. Um, and then we, we had some, some pretty good sets that we did leading into, uh, we went into a training camp with Dean Boxall's guys from St. Peter's. <laughs> there's some, there's many stories there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, leading into trials, that was probably the standout set for us. Gotcha. Uh, so, so <laughs> at what point uh, in the taper cycle, did you as a coach say, okay, she's going to break the world record in the hundred back. <laughs> I don't think you ever sort of look at it like that. I think we'd, we'd been racing really well. The whole team had been racing really well. Um, we, we raced well in December. 
Uh, we had some good meets in, in uh, late January, early February or middle of February. Um, so the progression was sort of maybe hinting that, but um, just, yeah, you, you never look at going into to a meet, you know, expecting a, a world record, that's for sure. But we certainly were putting a little bit of pressure on that process of maybe you know, getting that um, all right and then the result being what it is, of course. But, um, yeah, she was in, there were some, some pretty good performances leading in, into trials that gave us confidence, not just with our training, but also with our, with our racing. So it was, it was really building. It was good to see. But uh, at the same time, you just can't take anything for granted. I, especially in these last 18 months, uh, right, with, with the, the COVID-19 pandemic and just facilities being shut down, a- a- access being limited, in, in, you know, all over the world. Uh, but <clears throat> very diplomatic answer and, and I'm sure a very, very honest answer. I, I, I was just <laughs> having a bit of fun. Um, obviously, for our listeners, if, if you're not aware, um, Kaylee McEwen started off the Olympic trials in Australia and Adelaide uh, with a world record in the 100 back, 57.45 on June 13th. Um, and then, you know, she goes on to have a stellar 200 back 203 and, uh, stellar 200 IM 2082. Is that right? Um, Oceania record. Um, I mean, overall looking back at that trials, do you feel like it went about as well as it could for Kaylee? Yeah. Um, I think it definitely got the monkey off our back. That's a, that's an Australian term. I'm not sure if you guys use it, but, um, yeah, the world record came along, so that was probably one less thing that um, you know, I think she just missed out by 0.04 earlier in the, in the, in the season on that mm. world record as well. So, yeah, so there, there might have been that in the back of our minds, I guess. But So to get that, um, that result at trials really gave us the opportunity to then again say, right, one less uh, pressure there, of course. But now it just allows us to, to, to trust our race process. Now it's just, it was just a matter of getting the best Kaylee McEwen to the block on that day. Um, and yeah, we had plenty of confidence and plenty of faith that this is how we race. Our skills have improved to that level. Our swimming speed has been that and our, and our belief and our, and our trust in our process is, is where it needs to be. So never really any given Sunday speech. It was just a matter of, you know, you know, identifying with with her to say hey you've just got to turn up and, and be the, the best Kaylee you possibly can because it's worked for us in the past and we don't need to change anything yeah the in america the the u.s olympic trials is like is is my least favorite meet to go to because it's just there's so much pressure you yeah. you walk into the building and immediately you feel how heavy everything is and you feel the 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 tense, how tense everyone is. You feel the emotion that everyone's putting into their swims. Can, can you set the stage for me in terms of what Australian Olympic trials feels like? Um, especially given that it's, again, our trials mirrors the Olympic format and your trials is, is more of a prelims finals national sort of meet. Um, yep. And so what, how do you feel like that compares, especially to the games themselves? Yeah, so definitely probably an easier format, I guess, regarding you know two swims instead of three swims. But um, our qualifying times are a little bit faster to make the national team. That may change in, your, in the future. I'm not sure. Um, but if you, in, in terms of like tension, and I probably felt this year when I walked on pool deck, I felt an energy like never before. Yes, in the past it's been pressure. Um, but I think the pressure was sort of lifted in a way because we thought we'd lost this opportunity. And, 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 uh, and it's funny, you don't realize just how much and how important certain things are until you actually lose them and, and to, you know, finally have this opportunity to, to, uh, compete for another national team, which therefore was going to lead us into the Olympics that we thought we'd lost. I think the pressure was off, but it was just more about excitement. And once that excitement and all the, the Australian athletes got together, there was this real energy. Your hair on the back of your arms was standing up. Um, the mood was quite bouncy and, and vibrant. And um, yeah, we, there'd been some good uh, meets and good swimming from a lot of the Australian swimmers leading into that meet. So we, we weren't 
overconfident. I think the word was just excited and, um, and you know, the opportunity to perform was uh, just brought this level of, of energy that I've, I've never felt or seen before. And it, and it wasn't just on day one, but it was there till day six and, and every session, whether it was a heat swim or a final swim. Um, yeah, the, the energy just was there the whole time. And it was, uh, it was something I've never experienced before makes a lot of sense hearing you hearing you say that and, and knowing <laughs> knowing how that energy carried into the Tokyo Olympic Games and and how Australia performed there uh, because I mean, they they just you guys put on a show which was which was so fun to watch uh so so you you get through trials and then it's kind of the scramble to get to training camp right what was what was your experience of getting uh to Cairns and then ultimately to Tokyo as well. Yes, yeah, so uh, our staging camp was in Cairns. So that's uh, north of Queensland. So that's probably where we get our warmest uh, winter weather. Um, that actually sort of resembles what it's like for, for, for our home training base in the summer. So it's, it's quite comfortable. Facility is very good. Um, it's a very safe place and very welcoming place. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, Dean Boxall and myself had... Um, pre-organized us to get into camp. We, so we trials finished on the Saturday. We had some uh, logistics and some paperwork to do post that meets after the team was selected. Um, we gave the athletes a few days off to see family and pack bags and, and to uh, say goodbye to loved ones and pets and all that sort of thing. And uh, we jumped straight into it. We were, we were there at Wednesday. We were training Wednesday afternoon and, um, yeah, it was, it was something that we, we knew was really important. We wanted to get some warm weather in. We wanted to get some, you know, Dean had six athletes on that team um, and it was just a really good opportunity to create a, a team of seven athletes and um, we did some training sessions together. Uh, like, you know, not only did, was I fortunate enough to, to see how some of Kaylee's training sets were going, but I also witnessed some amazing things from Ariane and um, as well as... Um, Elijah and, and Mitch and, and the young, you know, the young girls that were on that four by one. Um, there were some amazing sessions, and it was we'd sit back after training each afternoon and go, "Wow, we probably just witnessed something that um, we take for granted, but not this particular like this particular moment." We we realised just what we saw today was was quite special and, and uh, quite lucky to be a part of, let alone coach. <laughs> um, yeah, so w- w- once we got there. Um, Australia's been quite lucky. We've, 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 we've managed well. We've been socially responsible and, and, um, and therefore we, we, we avoided a lot of the, the big COVID outbreaks. But funnily enough, as, uh, as time was getting closer for us to leave, um, we got a few um, breakouts and our government reacted. And, and with that reaction comes a little bit of panic. And with that panic comes a little bit of, hey, listen, patience here. You know, let's, let's be patient. Let's, uh, let's trust plan A. And, uh, but more importantly, we had, we had faith in uh, you know, Swimming Australia. We had faith in the government. We had faith in the, the AOC that um, we'd navigate through this. We just make, had to make sure we were making the right choices and, and staying socially responsible. And we did that. And um, yeah, just, just didn't panic, I guess, was probably the key there. And, and we were able to get on with our jobs, which was, which was awesome. And it's, it's, it's good to hear that perspective of, of, of that you guys were able to operate and, and, and move through safely and, and patiently. And uh, it, just hearing you say that gives, gives me some serenity of like, all right, yeah, we're, we're going to keep moving. We're going to get through this. <laughs> I mean, yeah. even now, right? Because uh, it's not over. But yeah. it, so that, that statement there was you know, like the day before, I'm probably jumping forward here, so I apologise, but it just reminded me of a, a story for you. Um, it was the day before the Olympics started. We'd sort of been all through those process. We, we jumped into a bio bubble before we left Tokyo. That Everyone knows that we're, was at the Olympics, that process that we had to follow to, to get into the country, into the village. Mm-hmm. Um, it was well organised. We're so appreciative of what the Japanese government did and, and it was just an amazing opportunity. But the day before the meet started, um, Yako texted me and uh, he said, how are you going? And I texted back and said, it's a slow burn, which basically meant that we were ready. Um, it was a couple of days earlier in, in, in warm-up. Kaylee did uh, some amazing things. Um, unofficially, you know, we did a couple of pace-suited 50s and you know, she 
26.6, which is actually under the world record, right? So being a coach and three tenths to justify maybe a fast watch or just, uh-huh. you know, <laughs> right. and I think I'm just trying to cope with all that and um, just reflection on the whole, you know, 19 months, let alone five years to get to this moment. So my, re- my reply was, it's a slow burn. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jaco quickly texts back and said, patience is an Olympics uh, value. And I thought about that. I thought, yeah, you're right. It was just a very simple statement. Patience is an Olympic value. And it was, that was his cue to, to say to me, just relax. All the work's done. You know, it's now time to, to sit back and control the controllables and um, you know, be patient here, mate, because uh, you know, your time's not tomorrow. The time's the next day. And then it's time to switch on. Be patient now. <laughs> that's, that is a great story. Uh, and that's sometimes that's the hardest part, right? Just, just you, you're, you're in that taper mode, you're at the meet and it's just like, all right, we're ready to go, <laughs> ready to go. And you just have to sit back yeah. and, until your events up. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's very easy to burn energy. It's very easy to say the wrong things or do the wrong things. And, uh, yeah, it's, Sometimes the, the, the best message is, is a simple message, but yeah, it really hit home to me, especially in that particular moment, for sure. Oh, and I would imagine at a meet like a trials or an Olympic games, um, the, you don't think about burning energy, you know, as, as something that, that happens, especially that emotional energy, right? But, uh, I, and like you said, sometimes a simple message is best, but do, do you, do you speak with your athletes about that? Um, you know, at a pressure filled thing like that, where it's just like, okay, coach, I'm ready to go. And it's like, all right, we gotta, we gotta put the brakes on for a minute. Yeah. So I was quite fortunate. I had a, an athlete that, um, that gains a lot of confidence in training sets and, and, and consistent work. And I've mentioned many, many times her compliance around that is the best I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, quite controlled, quite comfortable with the moment. Um, when you're in a, a national team, a lot of the times you just have to follow. So you know you're not thinking, you don't have to worry about um, an email or or a border entry or things like that. It was you know team management was very very good at the national level like yet again. So we, we were able to negotiate through a lot of those earlier sort of hurdles, I guess. Um, which which was very helpful. Um, you know, we knew we'd done the work. We knew the plan was 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 pretty close because you know we tested it in December and January and so forth, and, and was able to make a few little tweaks and and changes. Not not a lot of changes, but just more tweaks. And it was probably about I think maybe two days before the meet start, and uh, we have we probably have our final meeting just to talk about you know just a few things and um, to, you know give that 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 day before the meet starts, you know, a break from talking about swimming because, you know, that, that nine days is, is full on. Yeah. And uh, I think we both acknowledged with two days to go that we were a little bit nervous, but we identified that nerves are good. You know, nerves mean that you're preparing to do something you're really passionate about. And um, it was, we can identify that. We we're able to be a little bit vulnerable around about that, that answer. Uh, but at the same time, we're able to talk that through and say, Hey, listen, this is a good thing. Let's just not burn the energy. Let's, uh, Let's, let's just enjoy this now. We're really, really hard to be here. And um, last thing we want to do is, is get the wobbles because we've, we've overthought it or allow those nerves to get to us. Let's just use them as a, as a positive. Let's, let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's use that as a, an opportunity for us to reflect and, and uh, understand that we're about to do something that's important to us. And, uh, yeah, we were able to, to sort of manage that, which was um, I think the best way for us was to have that conversation before the meet started. Um, got a good night's sleep and uh and then the way we went it's great well I, with that i i have no choice but to jump right in to these games you know for her kaylee's first race individual hunter back that 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 was one of the, the best races of the entire games in my opinion we saw you know all three medalists were the world record holder at one point in the last two years. I mean, it was just a, a slug fest. Um, again, from, from the coach's perspective, heading into that final, where, where was your head at? Uh, I sort of sat away from the action. You know, I try to sort of get my own little space so I can 
just watch the race and I don't take any splits or any straight rates. We, I, you know, the um, our support staff, our, our sports science team collects all that data and so it gives me a chance to, to watch the race. So I'm a little bit away from the from from the Aussie team, just watching it. And um, Kyle, I think Kylie, it's a bit of a blur. Um, she gets up in that in that first seated heat, right, and she uh, blasts out a uh, an Olympic record. I'm thinking, wow, that's fast. And then written, and then I was sitting next to someone from maybe Argentina or something. I'm not even too sure what nationality or country. And they've gone, wow, that's fast. And I, and I said, yeah, but I don't think that record's going to last too long because Regan was up in the next heat. Sure enough, she lowered it. And I'm thinking, Kaylee, what are you going to do? And I'm thinking to myself, just trust the pro-. anyway. She got up there and. She blasted one as well, and 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 I and I, I sort of saw it coming, um, but then it was a conversation after that after that race. It's like okay, I, I get what's going on there, but um, it's probably time for us to now realise that it's about the process. It's about following the, the plan, and um, we probably don't need to swim that fast in the, in the semi final. We want to make sure we're ready to to swim fast in the final. And it was just a head nod, and I think it was just the, you know the girls just sorting out the order a little bit. And um, it was a stacked event. Like those those times could come from anywhere. That was the scary thing. But to to see those three girls fire up like that on the on the very first heat, on the for most of them, well, I think it was all their first swims. Um, I think it was probably just them blowing out the cobwebs and just sort of seeing who was who in the zoo. And um, yeah, but those those swims could come from anywhere. There was there was eight girls, definitely six girls that could have medaled if not won won that race. Absolutely. And, and, and so, I mean, it seems like she stuck to that plan, stuck to the process, semis, she's a little more contained. Um, and, and, and then finals, you know, what did you see from her there, aside from a gold medal effort? I saw the best race. I've seen her race some very good tactical races. I've seen her, um, you know, try and take races out strong and fast and, and hold on. Um, but so in saying that, I've seen her race some, some great races, but both of those swims in the, the 100 backstroke, first of all, is possibly the best executed race I've seen her do. Um, you know, I've, I've seen her with a stroke rate of 51 and, and it sort of affects that back end. Um, she nailed that, that, that stroke rate. She ascended it. You know, it was 46 in the 49. Um, her feet speed on the turn were great. Um, you know, we've really worked hard on our underwaters and um, we knew that we, we just had to get that, that first 35, that first 50 process down pat. And if we can get close enough, you know, it's going to come down to that last 15 metres and 15 to go. Um, it, was, it was line ball. There was, there was three swimmers that were, were neck and neck. And, yeah, we just, just had a little bit more urgency, I guess. And um, we just, yeah, we were able to get our hands to the wall because, the conversation we had, it's, 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 it's that exactly that. It's about getting your hand to the wall before the other seven athletes. And um, it was just a good old fashioned race at the end, wasn't it? Like, um, yeah, it was, it was nothing more than, yeah, you can have a process, I guess you can, you can have the best plan, but I think the winner's definitely going to come from the person that gets their hand to the wall first. And that's, that was pretty, pretty much how we, we sort of um, you know, focused and, and talked about it. Yeah, I mean that again. That final was uh, was one of my favorite races of the entire meet. It was just like you said; it could have been anyone's game. Um, and then, and then moving on, could did you see a difference or or a shift in her just of how she approached the rest of the meet once she got that first final out of the way? Once she set that first gold? Yeah, she's um, she was very very businesslike she was uh her recovery like she got through that mix zone quicker than i've ever seen her get through before um but yeah this is she's probably she's probably done things in the at this particular meet that we may have not have done so well two years ago or certainly four years ago mm. so i think the things that she did extremely well was a uh was a was a learnt process it was like there was things that we did, have done well in the past there's things that we we knew that we needed to get better so that when we did arrive at this particular moment, when that expectation and pressure was colliding, it was a matter of getting the little things right. So getting through the mix zone quicker, um, getting into to, to recovery quicker, to getting nutrition up and going to help with recovery. She did those things really, really well. And um, again, the best I've ever seen her do. 
So that gave me confidence in knowing that, hey, she's, uh, there's not a lot I'm going to have to do here. There's probably just a, you know, there's probably things that I could say wrong, if anything, because she just, she was just in the zone. So it was, it was just a, an opportunity for me to manage a few little things and just um, really, really be there to, to manage and, and probably support. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, she had it, you know, she really, really owned it. And, and, and uh, I could see the little things were getting done really, really well. So therefore I, it gave me confidence that um, she, she was, uh, she was on. And uh, that's as a coach, I'm guessing that's a great thing to see. And, and, and a good feeling to have, especially at, you know, the pinnacle of our sport. Uh, so tell me about the decision of the tuner back versus tuner I am, or, or I guess rather just dropping the 200 I am. Um, I know there was a conflict there and it, from a fan's perspective, I, I was disappointed because she was obviously the front runner in that 200 I am. It's like, I want to see her go for it, you know, the three for three individually. Um, but what, did, what, what, what went into that decision and ultimately led you to, say, all right, we're going to, we're going to just focus on the backstrokes here. I think the quality of the field, the quality of the field was probably in all honesty, was just too hot to chance it, you know, like first Olympics. Um, you know, if you look back to our Commonwealth games, which is a, a fairly big event for the Commonwealth countries, mm -hmm. she finished fifth there, um, progressed, you know, to world championships. She, she, she you know, didn't medal in the, the IMs or the 100 backstroke and, and was, you know, she put a really good race together to finish. So that whole process was, was, was building towards this games. But no matter what she'd done leading into this meet, it was still her first Olympics. And um, it was important for us to, to make sure that she was swimming fast on day two. And we still had the 4 by one medley relay, which, you know, nothing's ever 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 a certain especially with relays but if we thought if we got our, our racing right it was an opportunity for us to be in that that four by one women's medley relay on the last day so day two you need to be ready day nine you need to be on still you know that's seven days of full-on racing we have this utmost respect for the field that was assembled in the in the women's two, at the 100 and the 200 and when we looked at the scheduling of it we'd definitely done the work for it so it wasn't that we're on the done um we were definitely confident that we could pull it off, but it just didn't give us a session to recover. Mm. Um, she would, yeah, we sort of figured that you'd probably have to swim a 211 high maybe or a 212 to, to get a second swim uh, in the heat. Uh, and to, to go up a 211 9 or a 212 um, in a period of, of an afternoon where your competition was getting the, the afternoon off to recover, it was that sort of came into the into the psyche of it um and yeah in hindsight um, it was the right decision but it wasn't a decision that we made lightly because we're like you you know we we do a lot of IM training we've done the work three from three would be great but um yeah first olympics um we, we did what we did and we'll probably make the same decision again but that doesn't make we'll make the same decision next time we yeah we might go for the three for three next time but, <laughs> <laughs> uh again as a fan i'm certainly hoping for it but um it, yeah but the, maybe the, maybe we'll do the drop the 200 i am and, and just do the 400 i am that might give us that day's break that we're looking for <laughs> that would be awesome i'm i'm in full support again i'd love to see it but like you said it came down to the right decision she she you know she cruises in the 200 back as well gets her second individual gold there and then uh, women's medley relay, she's she's on again in day nine and and does it again, leads off in fifty eight oh one and uh, helps him to an Olympic record and an oceanic record. Uh, what was it like to see her on relays versus individuals for you? Um, well, we take our relays as you know we've taken a page out of the Americans' book. You know, like we take our relays very very seriously. Um, so I probably get in trouble for, for, for saying this, but she really valued that, that relay spot highly um, to the point of it probably gave her that extra motivation for the 100. Um, so she's figuring that if I, if I swim well in the 100, there's a fair chance that A, I'll be able to do a heat swim 
would be I'll, you know, I'll get the, the final swim. So she was very motivated for it. Um, the success of all of our relays are, are very important. And to actually, you know, it's an individual sport. So to, to share that moment with, um, I think it was five other girls from memory, um, was, was, is important. So, you know, you, you're walking around with, with five Olympic gold medalists and um, it's being a part of history there, you know, to, to, and to be fast and, and, and to, to share that, that moment with those girls was, was, uh, was special. Uh, individuals, yeah, that's, that's what we do. Um, that we're really embracing this whole uh, this whole relay format and, and the ability to, to be successful in as many relays as we can is a, is a national strategy. Well, I, I know you said it was, it's a highly coveted spot and she, she really wanted to be on it. Um, but but, but it, in the same vein, she's the world record holder in the 100 back. Was there any doubt that she wouldn't be on well, it? Well, there was. There's, there's always, you know, especially when you've got Emily Seabom in the race, you know, fourth Olympics, probably swimming as good as I've seen her swim. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's a credit to her, but yeah, you, you, I don't know. Like we just, we don't take anything for granted. We, we like to lock it away. Um, we like to make sure that we, we don't celebrate anything until the, all the tools are put away. Um, but yeah, I, I, and I think in a way that, that keeps us both honest, that, that sort of allows us to, to stay focused and to make sure that we're ticking all the boxes and we don't get too complacent because complacency hasn't got any spot in our sport whatsoever. The, the day you become complacent is the day you start coming back to the field. And um, yeah, so I don't think we'll ever, ever allow ourselves to become complacent or, or you know, I think we have a lot of respect for our, for my colleagues and she certainly has a lot of respect for the, for the colleagues that she races against. I think that's where it comes from. That. Yeah, that's, that uh, it certainly makes sense to me. I uh, so I have to ask. We we glazed over it a little bit. Can you give me a highlight from from the Dean Boxel Chris Mooney training camp? Wow, how long we got? How much longer we got left? <laughs> oh oh, for this one, I've got I've got all day. Um, I just love the guy's energy. It's infectious. It's legit. It's not a put on. It's who he is, and um, uh, every what's what's a highlight? Give me hmm. probably probably the highlight for me was the dynamics that we created, and it was the it was the, the environment that we created, and the fact that the athletes were able to then take an, uh, another level to that was was really impressive. Um, you know, we had some great leadership there with Mitch Larkham. Um, we had Molly O'Callaghan, who was just sublime. And um, we just had moments, like I said earlier, that we would sit back. Or actually, every night we ran home. That was part of our routine, that we'd run home and we'd have a chat while we were running and, and, and debriefed. And uh, there was moments there where we just were flabbergasted by what we saw and, and, and what we were a part of. And it was, there was moments where we'd pinch ourselves and say, hey, uh, all right, that's good. We can celebrate that. And we, we, but we're coaching this, you know, we were actually driving this. So we've got to get back on, stop being a swim fan and actually get back to your job to be the coach and, and how we're going to find ways to, uh, to keep moving this thing forward. But I think the athletes kept moving it forward with us. So they, they, they weren't relying us to, to continually drive this. Um, they, they really took some good ownership. A funny story. Um, <laughs> Oh, there's plenty. There's probably more in the village, but um, I think the fact that we could just get together and, and have a nice meal at night time and and uh, talk some some stories and, and have a few laughs and um, there was moments there where we didn't say a lot either. There was moments where we just like find each, each find ourselves just saying nothing and then take a moment where we'd look at each other and and he just turned around and said, "Boy." We're nearly on here. Are you ready for this? And it would be a simple, yeah. Are you ready? And he goes, yeah. And, but there was just these moments where we didn't really have to say a lot. We just knew what was coming and um, we, were, we were so thankful and, and, and ready. You'd have to ask Dean the funny stories. He's the funny guy. I'm, I'm not so funny. He's, he's hilarious. I cannot wait to ask to, for, for my first so conversation. I was his roommate for six weeks. He will stay up till about one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and then it's like, mate, I need some sleep. And he goes, yeah, but just one more. Then like, just one more debrief or one more conversation. <laughs> and he and he loves he loves 
trolling through media stories or um, he follows the US swimming team on Instagram too. <laughs> so he was always he was always keeping me up to date what they were doing. So he's obviously <laughs> probably going to shoot me for that. But um, he'd finally go to sleep at about 1 a.m. And he, and he sleeps like this. <laughs> and then the alarm goes off in the morning and he's up and it's, it's the new Dean. It's like, mate, we've had like five hours sleep. How can you be so energized already? And it's just how he is. But every day from about 11.30 to 1.30, he'll have a sleep. Mm. And that's where he recharges the batteries and he goes again. So he, he's, yeah. But oh, for the whole six weeks, I, he never had to make his bed because he just gets in the bed he gets in this position and he falls asleep like this and he wakes up like this. He gets out of his bed and he just pulls it across. He doesn't make any mess of his bed whatsoever. I've never seen it before in my life. Not for six weeks anyway. Not for six weeks. Maybe that's maybe that's the perfect, like, that, that is the ideal sleeping position. That's why they buried Ferris. He's like swaddled. Like He's swaddled. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And so maybe he, maybe, like, that's, that gets you such efficient rest but yeah. he only needs five hours. <laughs> yeah, five hours, and then it's his day nap. He's like, we haven't sleep. It's like, oh, I've got a meeting. Or he goes, okay, well, don't forget, I'm sleeping. Too. Yeah, so he needs his day nap as well. That's very. I see. So I'm very respectful and mindful that he needs it. He definitely needs. It. <laughs> he definitely needs. It. Yeah. I dude, I can imagine. I've I've heard such. I mean, obviously, aside from you know his, his Olympic moment, I've I've heard stories about him. I can't wait to talk to him the day I get to. Uh, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to get him on here at some point. Yeah. But, he's hard uh, one to track down. He, he doesn't do a lot, but um, he's uh, very inspirational, very energetic and very passionate and funny. <laughs> I believe it. Uh, so, so, so we've got about five minutes left, Chris, let's talk about you. You, you come off the Olympics and then you accept this position at Bond University um, tell me what was enticing about it for you and, and what made it the right fit? Uh, well, we, we sort of built the program at University of Sunshine Coast, USC Spartans. And um, it, just, it just felt the right time. Like, it did. like we talked about complacency earlier on. And um, yeah, I think sometimes when you, you, you drive out of your driveway and, and you know that, okay, well, I've left it this time. So that means I can stop at that coffee shop it may take a little bit longer to make the coffee, but it's a better coffee, so I'm going to do that. Like I started, I, I could start predicting my, my, my routine and my day. And um, Packy, I, I was fortunate enough to, to be an assistant coach with Dennis Cottrell in the, in the mid-90s, late 90s, in the 2001. And um, it was Grant's famous saying, he said, mate, it takes two types of hunger. It takes one to get there and a complete different one to stay there. And, mm. uh, you know, because, you know, once when you – while you're chasing someone, you've got that drive, you've got that hunger. When you're being the chased, then complacency has no place, right? So um, I think there's probably more of the challenge. Um, we achieved everything we, we, we promised to achieve. Um, and it's, it's an amazing program down here. It's, it's, an, it's one of the, it's got a great academic standing Bond University. Uh, it's got a, a great underpinning program. It's got a great facility. It's got great staff. And um, I just thought that it was a, it was time for me to take that next step in, in, in my, my journey. Um, you know, some athletes say, oh, coach, but it's three years. And, and other conversations you have, oh, but it's only three years. It's three years, but I don't look at it as three years. I look at it as a journey. And there's no pressure on it only being three years or there's no pressure on it being it's three years. The pressure is what you create each day on the on the little things, on the four percenters or the one percenters or that daily training environment to make sure we get that right. And um, I think I was looking to that that new challenge of, of creating influence with staff and, and other athletes uh, and, and being a part of a of a new exciting journey. So will you inherit any Australian national teamers uh, as coming in as the head coach and Will any of your swimmers from Sunshine Coast follow you down to Bond? Uh, we've had conversations, um, but as I mentioned earlier, this this program has a, a huge, talented, uh, underpinning program. So we, you know, a junior program. Um, the, the 
stack full of national age group champions. It's, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's really bright. So, um, yeah, we've had conversations with um, national team athletes and, and um, the USC Spartan athletes. Um, but, yeah, we're still sort of on a, on a break at the moment. Um, so the conversations have been had. There's time to, to process and decisions will be made over the next couple of weeks, I guess, of, uh, of uh, what's happening moving forward. But, um, yeah, the time, time to relax and the time to, to sort of, you know, be a little bit of a civilian for a moment is probably the key focus. And, and in the next couple of weeks, those conversations will, will, will sort of be more direct on, hey, what are we doing? But, um, yeah, at the moment, it's downtime for, for all athletes and coaches over in Australia, that's for sure. I have a feeling you're not very good at being a civilian. <laughs> well, I'm at work today, so I don't start till the 11th of October. But I got up early, went for a surf. I, yeah, day started, the day started nice and early for me. So, um, yeah. Uh, the life, yeah, seriously, the life of an Australian. I'm, <laughs> what, am, what am I doing with my life? That, that sounds like the way to you're do it. You're doing all right. You're doing all right. <laughs> you're doing good. Uh, so... So as, as a, as a reflecting coach, you know, you're, you're coming off, I'm guessing a pretty massive high of seeing your swimmer have a, have a three gold, four medal, you know, performance on the highest stage. Um, I'm guessing you felt pretty good about it. Not complacent, obviously, but, uh, and then you've got this new challenge. So where are you at today? You know, what, where, what are the inner workings of your mind, um, thinking about right now? Yeah, so definitely mindful of um, recharging the batteries. Mm. Um, but at the same time, if, if, if you know, I'm starting on October 11th, it doesn't start. You know, so the planning's occurring now. So, you know, the, the communication and the relationship that I, I need to have with faculty being at a university is, is key to me. Um, so we're starting those processes, we're starting those conversations. Um, and then you know, one of the, the major reasons we were so successful at, at USC is because we had great facilitators. We surrounded ourselves by the best physiotherapists, the best biomechanists, um, you know, the, the best nutritionists, the best strength and conditioning coaches. And I mean the best. Like we, we vetted these people like you wouldn't believe. We made sure they had skin in the game. We made sure that the contact time with the athletes was, uh, was as much as the contact time that we had with the, with, with the, with the coaches. Um, and that, that's not easy. That's easy. So that's the process that's important. That's a process that does take time. And, and that's probably where I'm at at the moment is to start those conversations and, and try to build those relationships. Mm. Uh, fair enough. Yeah, I got to ask, is, uh, is, is Mark staying at USC? Is yeah, he, he, yeah oh. he's definitely staying at USC. He's in charge of uh, high performance like sport at USC. So, um, But he's, he's got some successful businesses as well. Like he's got a... He's, um, he's not only a strength and conditioning coach, he's, uh, he's a very successful business owner as well. So, um, yeah, but that doesn't mean he's, he's fine. Like, I've still got him on speed dial. It's right up the very <laughs> top. I'll, uh, I'll be blowing his phone up from time to time with questions and, and conversations because, uh, yeah, his, uh, his import over the years has been, has been pinnacle to, to our success. He's been my go-to man for, for many years now. So... Will will be a void, but um, he's not going to be able to shake me just like that. I'll, I'll still be annoying him with, uh, with phone calls. That's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> well, Chris, I, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your out of your down day to sit down and chat with me for a little bit. It's always great hearing from you. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.